What up, though? Welcome to the What up, though? Welcome to the Beat Factory Three One Three War Stories Podcast, and I'm your host Juice. And I'd like to first start off by thanking all the well wishers and supporters that's been in my corner. Um, for those who don't know, um, ten days ago I was in a serious car accident, so I'm recovering from that now. So y'all will be seeing me on here every day now that I'm not able to work. So I got time now to get to these war stories that y'all ain't heard yet. So with that being said, let me start off with today's war story. And we'll take y'all back to 86 where it started at. But Rocky Red is currently serving time for. The case Rocky Red is serving time for is the Steve Roselle murder. Allegedly, Reds killed Steve. But this is why He's locked up. I'm going to get to the story, the root of the story, how it all started. They say it started about a female. She was part of, part of the problem, but it started before the female leaving. Steve and a cat named Jamaica. Jamaica was from Jamaica, real roster, bomb, car. He came and him and Steve was getting money, but they had a spot that was doing numbers. Allegedly, the friends got a house down the street, but they had a weight house. Those who are not in tune with weight houses in our area of town, the big fellas that was in power had large quantities of drugs. Well, they held them at houses where there wasn't no traffic at their house. I mean, wasn't nobody coming to visit their house. Only made me and the bosses who had authorization to even know where that house was was coming. And they always had security there to guard that, that product. Well, with all that traffic that Steve and Jamaica was having, because they were selling, you feel me? They didn't need that traffic on the block for them to be accidentally um, hit by the police or anything. So the friends po allegedly posted told them they had to shut their house down. Well, Steve might have been small in stature, but Steve's very big at heart, you feel me? So Steve told him he wasn't budging. And you know, Jamaica, he gonna speak his thing. You know, Bomba Cloud, you know, he real rude boy. Had ties with the Sharon Posse. Um, Jamaica said he won, they wasn't moving. So them boys went to war. But you know, allegedly them friends was playing too hard. They ran Jamaica back to Jamaica. Never to be heard from again. And Steve, well, to me, if you ask me, Steve was too tough but wasn't tough enough. And I'm not taking none from Steve Gangster. The part of him not being tough enough, Steve had all the artillery. Steve had the heart. But Steve ain't had no crew. You feel me? Steve just had him, his brother, and his uncle. You feel me? The friends had a team of killers. So we go get to that. So it started off. Can y'all see that? It started off in 86. When Steve and them started beefing, Steve had a brother Carlton. Which Carlton beef with the friends was because his brother, he riding with his brother. Carlton, to my knowledge, Carlton wasn't in the mess. You feel me with Steve? But Carlton wasn't no slouch either. So this is how I started. This is right up that I found. I'm going to share with y'all. The stuff that I found that wasn't true, I'm not going to even read that. But the stuff that I know that was close to the truth of what was going on, I'm going I'm to I'm acknowledge it. Reginald, known by the street name Rocky Ridge, who acted as the organization's chief enforcer, was charged with the September 1986 fatal shooting of 19-year-old Carlton Journey and wounding of Pamela Robinson, but was ultimately acquitted. Remember that day? Carlton was killed in September 1986. Reg beat that. See, this part of why Reg is allegedly locked up for killing Steve now. Because he said he still said to this day he didn't have nothing to do with that. And I don't know. So I'm telling the story what the street said and what the papers wrote up. So Carlton was killed then, right? So then we go go. We go go on. 
Fast forward. The same year. Fast forward a year ahead of time. That was 86. Now, on September 12th, 1987, an associate. Y'all following me? No, it was 86. It was 86. 86 when Steve got killed. That's Steve. That's Steve Roselle. It was 86 when Carlton, excuse me, it was 86 when Carlton got killed. Carlton Journey, that was Steve's brother. Now, this Steve, I ain't have a picture of Carlton, but this Steve. Steve gets killed in 87. On September 12th, on September 12th, 1987, an associate of Team Drug Dealer, Richard White Boy Rick Warshi, Steve, Freaky Steve Roselle, was murdered when Reggie Brown shot him to death with the Uzi as he slept. Brown, who, who reportedly, who reportedly, excuse me, murdered him on his foot. Brown, who reportedly had a dispute with Roselle over a mutual female acquaintance, entered Roselle's residence in the 1300 block of Glenwood in the early morning hours and shot Steve as well as his cousin, Patrick, Patrick, little Pat McLeod, who survived. Pat just passed, sorry to notify y'all that rest in peace, Pat. That was cool too, we call him Skeletor. Patrick McLeod, who survived, who be sleeping in the living room and was awakened by gunfire. You feel me? So this is why it went all the way back to 86 to 87. So you see why the police probably had to come and get rid his name kept ringing in there. And not saying that he didn't do it, not saying that he did do it. But the best friends was out here ringing terror. So would they name keep ringing? Because you got to think, you figure it. This went on for over a year. Carlton was killed. Before Carlton was killed, they had an uncle on Hammer, rest in peace to Hammer. Hammer was Steve and them other uncles. Hammer said, Hammer said he came home on the same house on Glenwood. This is their grandmother's house. It's Hammer's mother's new house. Say so he come over there and when he pulled in the driveway. He said them friends, you feel me? Reg and them, he said Reg and them allegedly jumped out and sprayed that car up so bad. I'm gonna say they shot that car up so bad he crawled up under the engine. That's the only thing that say. Could you imagine that? Not to mention what 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 brings a knowledge to who Steve was. Let's let's tell let's speak, let's rewind a little bit. Steve was was a neighborhood, a neighborhood gangster, local gangster. You know what I'm saying? Steve come from a, a family of um, street level people, aunties, uncles, all of them was in the streets. Steve and Pat also is the nephews of one of the most famous authors, urban authors out of Detroit, the one and only Donald Goins. Yeah, Rock and Reg locked up for killing Donald Goins' nephew. You feel me? And he probably didn't even know that. A lot of people didn't know that. But this is Donald Goins' family. These is his sister's kids. You feel me? His sisters don't want to help him do them books. So they got a close-knit family, and his family was at war with the friends and wasn't backing down. That was grandma house. You know how many times when people came to that grandma house? Not saying Reg. I'm not saying Reg. But you know how many times the best friends was accused of coming to that mother's house on Glenwood and they wasn't budging? And it was just Hammer, Carlton, and Steve. Yeah, Steve had plugs, you know what I'm saying? Steve was a hustler, so he was plugged in. He was one of White Boy Rick's lieutenants. He used to come through, you feel me? Ran with my uncle and them. All of them was cool. You feel me? But Rick wasn't, get, Rick wasn't getting off into that. White Boy Rick wasn't getting off into that friend's beef. What could he do? You know what I'm saying? If you if, if y'all read, followed on... Um, Big Nate Boone, everything Nate say ain't true, everything he say ain't, ain't no lie. 
But if y'all listen to him, um, that same year Steve was killed. Warshi was targeted in an unsuccessful drive-by while riding in the passenger seat of a friend's converter. While the two were stopped at a red light, a van pulled up beside them. The sliding doors opened. The two were only saved from the gunfire that followed because they ran the light. Nate Boonecraft, who eventually had 30 murders to his credit, later admitted to being the trigger man on that. So yeah, what could white boy Rick do? These boys was pushing heat to them. You feel me? Allegedly. You know what I'm saying? So you got you got you got Rick. You got Pat. At the time, Pat probably when Pat got when Pat got shot, when Steve got killed. Pat, Pat probably was like 15. You know what I'm saying? We 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 probably like 14. We probably wasn't even, we probably like 14, 15, me and Pat like the same age. We probably like 14, 15 when Steve got killed. You know what I'm saying? We just was getting into things. So then you got um Reg and them coming through. They beefing. Jamaica break bad on them and run back to Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? They even caught Steve. Do you know Steve was at the um Kettering Senior Picnic out on Belai. He out on Belai enjoying the Senior Picnic. Do you know he said them friends got at him on, on, on Belai? Oh, they had a full-fledged shootout on Belai. Um, Steve said he had to drive all down there, drive across the beach, all over the grass to get away from them boys on Belai. So the police, nobody did nothing. You know, he in a full-fledged shootout by himself. You feel me? But like I say, Steve had asked us them toys. He right there with White Boy Rick. So y'all, if y'all remember, White Boy Rick Daddy owned the gun shop. You know what I'm talking about? So when when he had to shut when he had to shut that gun store down, where you think all them guns ended up at? You know what I'm saying? So Steve had access to guns to to this day that I ain't seen on the street. You feel me? So he had fullies and all. I remember White Boy Rick Daddy got caught with fully automatics and silencers and all that type of stuff. So yeah, Steve had asked us to some of the best artillery, but he only got two hands. You feel me? It's hard, it's hard to be the team. See, y'all, y'all caught up on doing things single man. You know what I'm saying? A single man can't outdo a team, a team that's stunting together. You feel me? When you got a team like you had the friends, that's what made them dangerous. You ain't just how you ain't just how one hitter out the team, out the friends. A few of them boys was named as trigger men. Y'all seem to write up on them boys. That's what they was recruiting. You had to you had to drop something. You feel me? To be a part of them friends. You feel me? So when you got a team of hitters, then it's just you, your brother, and your uncle. And then allegedly Carlton was tired of the mess. You know what I'm saying? Because really Carlton didn't have nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, his 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 um beef with the friends, y'all fuck with my brother. You feel me? So he was strapped up every day too, shooting it out with them. It's on site with them. I remember Carlton had a full flood shootout with them at the gas station. You feel me? So yeah, this was going on for for over a year. You know what I'm saying? I just named the year right there. But while they was while they was in the midst of doing all that, let me let me go back. In between that, in between Carlton's murder to Steve murder from '86. So you had Carlton got killed. Same year, 86, on December 20th, 1986, Israel. That's that's Reg, them older brother. This one of the, it's the older brothers that y'all don't hear about. Israel and Terrence, known by the streets, named Boogaloo, became the victims. Oh, they wasn't on, they, they was on the other end of the barrel this time. They became the victims of drive-by shoot. While sitting in a Chevy Blazer parked near Detroit 7th Police Precinct, Terrence, who'd been shot in the head, managed to stagger to a nearby police station and throw a brick through a window in order to get the police officers inside attention. Both brothers was taken to Detroit's receiving hospital, first level trauma unit center, where Israel was pronounced dead on arrival. Within the week, Terrence checked himself out the hospital. It was widely believed that the 
perpetrators acting in the behalf of Hollywood. See, that's why y'all are here on the streets, even though we seen less than them and knowing they project boys, we seeing the best friends name tied with Demetrius Holloway Merck. Let me go on. At Israel funeral was held on December 27th. So they got shot on the 20th. This seven days later. Israel funeral held on December 27th. That same day, Gregory, that's the other brother, Brown brother, that's Ghost. Gregory was shot to death during a drive-by shooting, walking on Peter Hunt Street near Grash Avenue on Detroit's east side. That's over there, Pat's Lounge. That was, that was one of their main hangouts, the friends. Gregory, who was dressed in the tuxedo he wore to Israel's funeral, was shot several times in the head. An associate, Andre Patrick, who was walking with Brown at the time, was struck as well. Patrick was listed in serious condition after being transported to Detroit's receiving hospital. You see what I'm saying? So this all going on, this this all that's transpiring. So they, they names keep coming up in murders or being murdered. You feel me? So what was the what was the um law post to do? You feel me? That's what I'm saying. Reg might have got a bad shape. You never know. Not saying he did do it. Not saying he didn't. I'm not taking no sides. I'm just saying. Because the streets ain't what it is. It ain't what you think it is. It ain't what it seemed to be. Real talk. Y'all be thinking that um, it's, it, it's, it's clean cut. But the streets ain't clean cut. You know what I'm saying? You never know what, 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 a, what a human gonna do. Humans are unpredictable. You feel me? So saying that to say, you see how they just say to friends. So they don't be knowing exactly who it is. They they just put their name on it. So they take who who name ring the loudest. You feel me? Hold on. Let's keep going. That's that. that was Israel Ghost. Israel Friend Ghost. Okay. Now in May of 87, we had 87. Reggie was sentenced to fatally shooting. No, 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 let me go back. In May of 87, 1987, Reggie was accused of fatally shooting Kurt Levi and wounding William Miles, but the case was eventually dismissed. You see how them boys keep walking in there with the murders and walking out of there for the murders? That's, that's, that's just right there alone, in and out for different murders. That's four right there with Carlton. He was accused of Carlton and Pamela. He beat that. Then it's um, um, Levi William. He walked out on that. You know what I'm saying? They names keep coming up to murders. Why I'm saying it like that is to get y'all to pay attention to if your name keep coming up and stuff. It come a time where you might then do this, but your name kept coming up and so much other stuff. We gonna make sure this one stick. We gonna hold you for something. Same thing with Larger Parker. He's steady saying he didn't do this, do that. But he feel that since they couldn't prove the Maserati thing going to give him life, the least little thing they did get on him, an attempted murder, not even a murder, he been in there 34 years. The streets saying what it is, if that's what you want to set yourself up for. I'm talking to the youngsters that's out here playing these games, you feel me? And I had to tell the story because the Julio Julio situation, what they said, a female played a part. When I heard that first thing I thought about was Steve. You feel me? They always say female play a part. Y'all be thinking it's all about butter and guns. Female always in the mix because they be going back and forth. You feel me? Because they like that. They like they like the um the attentions that they get. They like to be around the lifestyle. So we go fast forward. Okay, so Reggie was convicted. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, all right. Go back. Reggie was convicted of carrying or possessing a firearm with, when committing or attempting to commit a felony, assault with attempt to commit murder and second-degree murder in connection with the Steve Roselle shoot. 
On May 20th, 1988, he was sentenced to two years for the weapon violation, 20 to 40 years for the assault with the attempt to commit murder, and life for the murder conviction. Though Brown was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison, partly due to McLeod's testimony, he was released after the conviction was overturned on appeal 15 months after the shoot. You see what money could do for you? 15, 15 months afterwards, though. On his appeal, that's come from having Paul Curtis, some of the best lawyers back then. See, at least them boys are smart enough. They had lawyers on retainer. I hear a lot of these situations with these boys right now. Y'all be taking pictures of money that's talking in y'all heads. All up and down your arm, all up and down your body. Y'all have money everywhere in these pictures. But soon as y'all get locked up, soon as y'all hit that, y'all first call, y'all calling y'all mothers and fathers to come and get y'all. See, in our time, we didn't call mom dukes, no. Reels talk. You feel me? We called our man them who we was shaking that bag with. For, for first of all, we didn't want mama them to even know. And then second of all, if they knew, they want, if they did come and get it, they was coming to get us to whoop us. They weren't coming to get us to show us no love. For, you weren't getting, re getting rewarded for going to prison and getting locked up, going to juvie. That ain't no reward. Ain't no honor in that. That's for losers. So I want y'all youngest to get that out y'all head. You feel me? It's, it is something wrong with going to jail. Ain't no honor in that. You on the bench. You in time out. You being punished like you a child. Y'all saying y'all grown. But what you want to be confined and held against your will. Told what to do, when to do, go to sleep, what to eat. Come on, man. That's what you looking forward to going to do? That's some honor? That's some reward? No. Streets ain't what it is. So we going to say... It was released, yeah. So in June, alleged best friend members James Lee, Jimmy the Bruiser, Denard, led Michigan State Police on a high-speed chase for eight miles heading east on I-96 near Ionia, Michigan. After Denard's turbocharged Act 1987 Volvo was stopped and searched, police found 8000 in cash that he claimed was earned mowing long. On September 12, 1988, Carl was murdered. That's Maserati Rick. Was murdered in his in his bed at Detroit's Mount Carmel Mercy Hospital, where he was recuperating from gunshot wounds sustained in a shootout two days earlier. The next day, Holloway testified in recorder's court which had exclusive jurisdiction over all felonies, felony cases committed in the city of Detroit. On the behalf of James Red Freeman at the weapons and drug trial, investigators estimated that at his peak, 80% of the cocaine distributed in Detroit could be attributed to Holloway. Following Nate Kraft's October arrest for drug possession, the seasoned hitman's sister informed Tim that their younger brother had been killed on Terrence Brown's orders for failing to pay a drug debt. Seeking revenge, Kraft agreed to become a confidential informant for the Detroit government. We go get to that later. We'll get to that later. I want looking for that right now. But we are going to get to that. And I'm going to let y'all know, um, starting the first, the first of next month, this in a couple days, well, what I'm going to start putting on, on the War Stories podcast is going to be called The Rat of the Month. What I'm going to be doing is pulling out real files of these older guys that are still out here in these streets, playing with these young boys, misguiding, um, poisoning the street, tearing down the community. I'm going to expose you for what you really are. Let them know y'all, they working firsthand with the law. So if you still out here in these streets and you got paperwork on you, expect to be called to the front of the congregation. That's my man dog face to say. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we're going to start right of the month. 
I don't know if I'm gonna call it that, but that's what it's gonna be about. So that's probably what it's gonna be called. Ride of the month every month. I'm gonna cut this short now. This, this story on the best friends, we're gonna get back to that. I'm gonna pick that back up. I gotta run to the um pick up my prescription real quick. But I appreciate those who tapping in. Also, that I'm gonna be down and I'll be back on. I'm trying to come on two or three times a day for real now, because I'm not working. That's why I got the cash app on there for those who can contribute. You know, throw a throw, throw a dog a bone. You can throw a dollar in there. You feel me? I ain't asking for much. You know what I'm saying? They say that the game is to be sold, not told. So I'm gonna sell the game. We're gonna do dollar shows. So that ain't gonna hurt nobody. Hit the cash app with a dollar if you can stand it. If you can't, I'm still gonna be here. You feel me? And with that being said, I'm here to let y'all know the streets ain't what it is. You feel me? And um, I'll be back. Thank you for tapping in. We're going to finish this story up about Rock and Reg and the best friends. And then y'all let me know. Do y'all think Rock and Reg did all the things that he accused of for real? When he had a crew, y'all thinking he the only one jumping out doing everything? But I do salute the brother because I think he being solid. I think he just ain't never tell who actually did that. I don't think he did, Steve, you know? but I think it came from him. But I don't think he was dumb enough to try to go walk, walk in that house himself. Whoever killed Steve took a chance and got away with it coming in their house. If you recall what I read, Steve then was asleep on the couch. You feel me? So whoever took that chance had to be somebody that, that felt they didn't really know them and they could walk up to that house. You feel me? Because what if Steve and wasn't in there sleep and happened to be looking out the window to see you coming? They knew who Reg was. You feel me? That's just food for thought. I don't want nobody to think that I'm taking nobody's sides, but I'm going to just keep it real over here at the Beat Factory 313 War Story Podcast. I'm going to tell it from both sides. And Steve and the whole family, that's my man. You feel me? Oh, yeah, the more about Steve. Steve come from a real gangster family. It wasn't just Donald Gorn. Steve mom, Steve mom got locked up for, if I'm not mistaken, six bodies. Yeah, and one of her boyfriends put his hands on her and she bodied him, allegedly. You feel me? But in the process of covering up what she did, she went to burn the body and something. I think the apartment building caught on fire. And I think five more innocent people died in that accident. So Steve mama was doing a bit for five, for six bodies. Yeah. So Steve grew up like that, you know what I'm saying? Knowing firsthand the street life. Donald Goins was his uncle. You heard the story Donald Goins was telling. You feel me? So you know the life he you know the life he was living. So look at the kids coming up around him. You feel me? What he was into and what he was living around. That's where Steve and them come from. You know what I'm saying? So you had we had we had Pat. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Pat. You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to do this story. I talked to Pat. He was sick. I think Pat was fighting. Um he became a diabetic. And he had just told me, you know what I'm saying? He had, the doctor had just told me he had six months to live. So he told me he was going to come and give me the story. You feel me? But shoot, it wasn't even two weeks later. I, I'm saying he, he passed away when I talked to his family. You feel me? So that just messed me up. So I had to, had to finish what me and Pat was going to do. You feel me? You know, so you had Pat. You got pretty boy Steve, freaky Steve, you know what I'm saying? Steve was a real one, you know what I'm saying? You had Rocky Ridge, you know what I'm saying? You had Rocky Ridge, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know the truth about Rocky Ridge. Well, the stories I heard, the legendary story. But he not supposed to be forgiven. Reg been gone. He been gone with that when Steve got killed 87. So Red's been gone since 87. It's 2024. You feel me? He doing second degree life. He's not doing, he did not doing natural life. Second degree life means he see the board every five years. So Red's probably been seeing the, the board every five years since he had got 15 years in. And now he got like 36, 37 years in. Come on now. You feel me? So maybe with Pat dying, it could be a, a catch-22 for him. Maybe he got a better shot at it. You know what I'm saying? Pat can't object to it. Or maybe they might use Pat's dying declaration. Maybe that might hurt him. But he got enough time, man. You feel me? They never proved he did do it. He's still saying he did do it. He could have been said 
he did he did do it somebody did did it like these other guys be claiming um dead people did this dead people did that he just said he didn't do it he didn't know who did it you feel me and i still i think he didn't do it all this time he could have been you know what i'm saying fetched out and told the parole board i'm sorry for what i did and i you know what I'm saying? I was I was young at the time. He was in his 20s, early 20s, 19, 20 years old when he caught that case. You feel me? But he ain't did that. He stood strong, steady, said he didn't do it. After 36, 38 years, that's almost 40 years. That's closer to 40 than 30. You think he wouldn't have been by now and say, hey, look, man, I tell you, I done seen guys go in there and confess stuff they didn't do to the parole board. This man steady saying he didn't do it. You feel me? But see, with the friends, with him being part of a crew that was in, into the biggest war that Detroit had seen at that hour, who was they going to believe? Every time they turned around, it was either him or his people in there for a body of being body. You feel me? me so, why I'm saying that is birds of a feather flock together. You feel me? They come at y'all with that Rico. That's a, they, that's, that, that's a silent Rico. He could be the one time they know he didn't. I'm, we going to get back to the friends. I'm going to end here because I got to go. I appreciate everybody tuned in. I, I'll be back. I'm going to be back on the day tonight. Tonight, come back on. Check me out. Appreciate everybody. Like, subscribe, comment. Please hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share my share. Start sharing my stuff. I'm going to be on here more. And I'm going to bring y'all the real stories. You know, these guys mad at me for telling these stories because I'm telling the real stories. And some of these guys don't want these stories being told. So I appreciate y'all tap in and like, share, and subscribe, man. For real, let's, let's get this up. Salute to everybody in the chat. Appreciate y'all. And I'm out. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Beat Factory 313 War Story Podcast. And I'm your host, and I'm your host Juice. And I'm out. Holla. You feel me?